Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Um, today I'm going to talk about tourniquet usage. Uh, these are two basic tourniquets that uh, you've probably seen before that I carry with me. A TK4 um, tourniquet by H&H &H and a RATS tourniquet. Uh, both of these type of tourniquets are, are elastic based tourniquets. I mean, they're like bungees, they got to pull on them. Um, the other type of tourniquet out there is a cat tourniquet. Um, or sorry, a windless type tourniquet which would be something similar to like one of these right here. Guys, yeah, pull this bad boy off. You know, that has a windless. Um, it's a different design obviously and different materials, but a different principle of usage. But the goal is the same, it is to occlude blood flow or stop blood flow to an appendage. Um, so basics on tourniquet use. I guess I'll throw that in the picture there. Uh, basics on tourniquet uses. Um, Tourniquet application needs to be high and tight on the limb. Okay, it needs to be high and tight on the limb, whether it's either arm, way up in here, uh, or all the way up to your leg or your groin crease, way up in here. Uh, so you want to get those tourniquets high and tight uh, for, for several reasons. Um, one, it's an easy place for you to always remember to slap a tourniquet on. So it's kind of like a malfunction fix for guns. Um, there's no thinking, you just fucking do it. Uh, so tourniquets high and tight, same place uh, each and every time. It's very consistent. Um, other reasons why, um, part of that consistency is you don't have to, you know, go like about the picture directions that you see like the Boy Scout manuals and other places that say, you know, measure two inches above the wound or two hand widths or never above a joint or never below a joint, never put it over two bones, etc, etc. So, um, uh, easy to remember, high and tight on the limb, okay? Um, <clears throat> All the reasons why you want to go high and tight in the limb is uh, also remember that what we're trying to stop is uh, blood flow to those limbs and a lot of times that's due to um, a, a blood vessel, usually a major one like a brachial artery or femoral artery uh, being severed, whether by bullets or blades or some other uh, by broken bones, any of those things could have, could have severed that artery. Um, or blood vessel, you want to be able to include blood flow. Well, remember that those vessels are elastic. Um, they, they, they have a little bit of pull on them. Um, if y'all remember, kind of like Black Hawk Down, uh, if you've ever seen the movie, kind of get an idea of what's going on. Um, when that private um, uh, femoral artery retracted or pulled up into his hip, um, that blood vessels, those blood vessels do that. So another reason why you want to go high and tight on the limb is uh, just in case you may have a hole, let's say here, in your arm, well that artery uh, could have curled up and pulled up, kind of like a pulled muscle or pulled tendon, uh, it tends to roll on itself or pull, retract inward. So you want to get that tourniquet higher than what you expect um, the actual trauma that you see to be at. So you want to go high and tighten that limb. Um, today I'm going to demonstrate like on a TK4 tourniquet. Um, pretty straightforward, you got two, two basic hooks right here. Uh, it's the same on both ends, it's symmetrical. Just gotta put that sucker high up on here. I'm gonna attempt to snake one side of it um, into that tourniquet. Okay. And then all you're gonna do is get that sucker started and then pull over here. Okay. Now, if you notice, um, I haven't started cranking down yet. There's only two wraps here. After at least the first or second, one, you're gonna pull all the slack out of it like you jump start one of those lawnmower machines. All right. And then you're just gonna. Keep pulling all the slack out. <laughs> Every time you wrap around. All right. Uh, two easy ways to test to ensure that the blood flow is being occluded to that limb. Probably needs to be a tad bit higher right up in here, up in your meat muscles. Um, but uh, ways you can test to be sure that uh, blood flow is being occluded is if you can look at my hands, you'll probably notice my left one here. Uh, is turning a different color and my normal one here is the normal color uh, white uh, sorry uh, pinkish versus almost a whitish color um, you can check for the absence of a pulse uh, if you don't if you barely feel or feel a zero pulse that's a big clue that blood flow is not going to that limb um, you'll start to feel numbness and a little tingly at first uh, applying a tourniquet is painful Okay. Um, some people also have described it just as painful sometimes as the original wound they received, uh, but it is life-saving. It is life-saving. So high and tight on the limb, uh, put it on there, wrap it down, cinch it down tight. Um, other ways you can kind of check, take the one finger rule. If you can slip a finger underneath that tourniquet, it's too loose. As you can see, I can't even squeeze in my little finger, my little digit here. Um, so. 
that's on there pretty tight okay so there you can tell all right um, so anyways that's how to apply a basic TK4 or any pretty much any kind of windless tourniquet the principle remains the same high and tight on the limb cinch it down tight till the red stuff stops coming out all right uh, just remember if you put a tourniquet on have someone else pop it off for you because I don't want you getting a habit of putting it on real fast be like, oh shit that hurts like a motherfucker and then pop it right off okay that's a bad training scar that you don't want to have so uh, once it's on keep it on um, and when you're done let somebody else pop it off for you uh, so uh, if you don't mind right there high and tight yep so somebody else is you do it so you can, oh, underneath there sir there you go oh <laughs> All right, and uh, so that's how that tourniquet can be removed for training purposes. Uh, also, on uh, tourniquets, technically they're one-time use only, but uh, like every manufacturer out there, it's one-time use only. Uh, there's always a, a two with a big cross through it, um, which means uh, you can't use it more, you know, twice or more. Uh, so make these your training tourniquets. Okay, after you start practicing with them, uh, make them your training tourniquets because they will tear, they will abrade. Um, Y'all can really see right there. Um, this one right here has been riding around my pocket. That's where those little nicks come from. Uh, would it still work? Yes, absolutely. You just saw how it worked. Uh, but keep that in mind. Just like your guns and you guys who cycle out your ammo, check your medical equipment too. Uh, thanks again, guys. That's that's pretty much all I got for basics of tourniquets. Uh, stay tuned for more medical and EDC shit. Thanks, guys.